A8 BYP, let's see, Heathkit, Hot Water 7, HW7, Mighty QRO Rig. This exact radio was my novice rig in 76. I built it from a kit, as Heath kits were. 40, 20, and 15 meters. In the novice days, we were required to use crystals. So you'd have to push that button in, plug a crystal in for, for crystal frequency control. Very, fairly poor VFO, mechanical, but uh, was allowed to operate from 7.1 to 7.125 on CW. So pretty narrow band. I always wonder why I couldn't get much further than a couple hundred miles on 40 meters with this rig. Uh, Heathkit advertised it as three watts and relative power, zero through five, and key it down and tune, turn the tuning control, and the, the pointer would rest about three. So I figured the manual said three watts, and the pointer said three watts, it must be three watts. Well. Heathkit lied. More on that in a minute. <laughs> this receiver is as broad as a barn door open behind this big clamp I've put on for finer adjustment. There's a, a, a pre-select, and the pre-select is hypersensitive to uh, microphonics. Just do that, and the receiver goes nuts. But um, I got this uh, rig out in 2015, took it apart, decided to restore it. Oodles of experience doing that kind of thing. A few electrolytics to replace. Replaced the polystyrene foil capacitors in the VFO with surface mount MP0s. That made a very big difference in stability of the VFO. It's real stable now. But this thing was a absolute terror to figure out how to get it apart and clean these switches inside because they're they're blocked in with that steel rail in the front. You can't pull the stems out to clean and relubricate. And a thing like that will have dried out grease and metal fragments inside, and that's very bad. So there's no way <clears throat> without damaging this board. And these old brown boards are very easy to damage. The foil peels off real easy. That's a... Uh, I'm not sure what that is, a Bakelite or some kind of board, and it's hard and smooth, so the foil doesn't stick to it, <clears throat> as well as the rough fiberglass. But the only way to do that, without having to unsolder all of, let's see, there are 22 pins on each switch segment, 33, 40, 33, 40. There are 40, 40 pins on those four switches. There's the crystal switches back under there. They're not all soldered to the board, but the chance of, of being able to unsolder all those and get them all free at the same time is about zero. There's going to be damage to the board. E even I probably can't do that, and I wouldn't. I know better. <clears throat> so the answer is not take the switch body out, but the answer is to take that transformer out, these uh, capacitors, resistor, take these components out, out here, but take all those components out and release the, the switch plungers from the springs and the detent pins up in front and slide the whole works out backwards. And uh, there'll be, um, I think there are, I think there are eight leaf springs inside that fold over and a slide or some deal like that. There's a recessed pocket inside the thing. And as I recall, it needs to be turned upside down to take them out or they'll fall out. But that allowed with that, with that circuit board out to then wash these things out with spray cleaner because I tried spraying cleaner inside and working it. And then I took it apart and the cleaner did no good. So no clean these from the outside and don't use them like they are because they'll be destroyed because of lack of lubrication. But uh, take those out one at a time by sliding them the opposite direction. That worked really well. <clears throat> um, a hint, this is a coax from the uh, TR relay to the front end of the receiver and originally they routed it out around the chassis being that 
I didn't like that excess length. I shortened it, and that's a mistake. Uh, they routed it out there for a reason. Don't move it. Uh, as I recall, it made the microphonics much worse because that cable's it free to move. But um, I never did quite figure out why it's so horribly microphonic sensitive. I even tried putting some isolating washers on that. It didn't help much. <clears throat> but um, the receiver is AKC wide. It's a, uh, it's a dual gate MOSFET. Uh, where is it? Right up there. VFO is applied to one gate and receive antenna to the other. The MOSFET, a very poor one kilohertz filter and 110,000 gain RCA amplifier cam, op amps, and that's it. So broad as a barn, but that's just the way it is. <clears throat> but to the part of Heathkit lying about three watts. I'd always wonder why I couldn't couldn't make contacts on this thing with a dipole. And I never had enough transmit power to operate the cheap SWR meter that I had, so I couldn't work with the antenna. Couldn't match the antenna, and it was probably way out of match. Because now I'm working half the world with this much power, or less. Well, when I restored it, I got to look at the final circuit, and those two transistors are good for 20 watts of dissipation. So this rig ought to easily be able to put out 10 watts. The problem is they left out the driver stage. They went from the mixer, <clears throat> that transistor there, through a transformer into the base bases of the two transistors. They left the driver stage out and the thing was transmitting three-fourths of a watt, not three watts. And there's no way to fix it without adding a driver stage. That wouldn't be too hard. But um, what I found was that the is that this was improved by taking out the original emitter resistors. See where the E is? They got to be replaced with very carefully matched 0.15 ohm resistors. If they're not precisely matched, the power will drop. And I replaced, I f no, I, I added, I added a 47 picofarad, I think it was, from the collectors to ground, and that brought the power up just a bit. So changed the tuning on the collector. It's up to a watt and a half now, which is th that ain't bad. If you if you've got a good antenna, you'll be able to work DX with that because I can work with less. <clears throat> so if you want a real cool radio, this is it. And um, unfortunately, Heathkit's not making kits anymore because that, that was the thing, you know, building and doing things. Um, I added a cheap 555 oscillator side tone in the back <clears throat> and a, uh, a small service mount amplifier for, for uh, driving a speaker. But put them taped them on the sides of the chassis so it didn't uh, modify the circuit board. But very, very important, use a low temperature soldering iron because use a high temperature iron and you'll peel the foil right off that board. So if you can find one at the Hamfest, grab it. It's a neat little rig, Kate and EYP.